The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan podcast by night, all day. All right, good Friday, everybody. Is it good Friday? Be good Friday, but it, oh. it, happy Friday. Happy Friday. TGIF. <laughs> I like Good Friday. We can go with Good Friday. I thought <laughs> it pretty good Friday. Good Friday, good Charlotte. We're all happy to be here. <laughs> Yeah, I'm hanging, I'm hanging up the call. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all here. What? One week? One week post five? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of the vibes. Fantastic. are too strong. The vibes are too strong. <laughs> one week post five camp. <laughs> Fuck it, we'll do it live. <laughs> we'll do it live. Um, I don't know. What? Are you? I dropped my shit. Okay. Okay. So. I don't know about you guys. Everybody on the timeline seems to be reporting that they're feeling like kind of down, like they sort of did the MDMA crash. Mm-hmm. Um, as someone who's never done MDMA, I can't personally relate to that because <laughs> uh, I'm a boring straight lacer. But mm-hmm. I don't know. How do you guys feel? I actually feel pretty good. Um, like I, I have done events like this before, and I'm like, aw- I was aware. I was like, I know there's going to be a crash coming if I'm not careful. Um, so I kind of tried to do some stuff that I thought would smooth it out. Uh, like what? Like I, ske- I scheduled a ton of calls, first of all. I've just been fucking uh. called up this week. And it, like this call, for example, uh, that's been pretty good uh, with Vibe Campers and other people, just like people I wanted to talk to. So like that's felt nice. It's been like, oh, yeah, I'm just still talking to a lot of people. I'm not just going to be like lonely as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so that's been good. Uh, I've also been writing a lot which uh, I am currently, I finally found something I wanted to write about enough to do like a Substack post. So I'm going to do my first Substack post soon. Cool. Congratulations. So really Thank you. I also asked someone out on a date. So that's nice. It's like a nice yeah. I've got that to look forward to. Well, I oh, think she said yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. So we'll Let's go, big cues. <laughs> <laughs> big cues. Cues with the juice. <laughs> Thank you. And I've been... I've also just been like, I don't know, thinking about like, oh, like, what do we do with all this energy that was generated? Like, how, how do we like keep this going forward? And I've been trying to like tweet about that. So I feel like I've like, I have like a, I have like a sense of sort of like how to keep going. And that's helped with the, with the, with the, the malaise. Crash. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. I, um, I have been pretty good i mean it's been i had a little bit of crazy irl stuff happen since i got back but uh for the most part you know i told my little immediate family about vibe camp and they can't stand me (laughs) so you know i showed them the video of the guy saying i needed to tweet more and my sister (laughs) rolled her eyes and you know i I told them about meeting all the people who had me banned and how they liked me and then you know my sister-in-law walked out of the room you know it's just been a Anything I ever could have hoped for, which was just to like, <laughs> you know, surround myself with people who just like love me unconditionally to irritate my family. <laughs> it's just been great. They're not they're not terrible people. I'm making it sound like they're like I'm making it sound like they're bad people. They're not bad people. They're just, you know. They're just fed up with your bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like most of us are that know you in real life. Oh, no. I I like Ken's bullshit. I'm not fed up with it yet. <laughs> See, yet. just like this. I'm, I'm just I'm going to show them this podcast episode next. <laughs> you know? Ken's bullshit is great. I love Ken's bullshit. <laughs> actually. Like, actually. Yeah, Ken turning you know. into like the ultra extrovert Chad version of himself at Vibe Camp was like not something I saw coming, but absolutely should have been on my bingo board. It was so yeah. nice. Remember, like, Ken, remember the opening ceremony when we were just, like, shouting, like, crazy oh, yeah. people? And the, that was so fun. I was like, oh, yeah, we vibe it. We yeah, vibe yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like that. I'm like that anytime you put me into a crowd. You know? Yeah, it's so like, like, you, you, Is you, that girl a guy, too? <laughs> like, are you the one who started the Brooke chant? Because I thought that was yes. really good. Yeah. Too. Yeah, that was solid. That was like. Thank you. Thank you. Fucking good as hell. <laughs> I was uh, so pumped about that. It's so much fun. <laughs> Yeah. Was, Chanting yeah. people's names is hella fun. I just think we should do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't know. For me, I think I had such a like transformative experience that I was kind of afraid like that I would come home and drop right into old context and sort of become mm. old me. Yeah. And it has not been that way so far. I feel like I've actually gotten hey. to take a lot of it home with me. And yeah. that feels like really good because 
Yeah. I was not expecting camp to go the way that it went for me at all. So, mm. mm-hmm. like, in a good way. It was, like, more than I could have hoped for or dreamed for in a million years. So, to get to come yeah. home and, like, actually... You can tell I still lost my voice. I lost my voice at camp. It's, I still can hear it. Um, wow. Yeah, but I really wore myself out, but in a good way. So it's like, you know, now I get to do the work of like really fully integrating all of it because yeah. that was like a big fear. I was like, I was like driving home. Like when I finally dropped Ken off and then I started my leg of the trip home by, all by myself, I was like, I'm going to go home and I'm going to go right back to being who I was. And then I'm going to turn into one of those people who has to go to festivals to even feel like themselves. And I had a whole moment. I was like, I had a whole moment. It was like, (laughs) yeah, because Ken texted me and was like, being alone feels like surreal. It's so surreal. And oh, man. I texted yeah. him back and I was like, I'm so emotionally taxed that like somebody could shoot me in the leg and I wouldn't even make a facial expression. I was running home like, <laughs> <laughs> like it was completely catatonic. Like it just didn't make any noise. I was oh, just like, God. I wasn't singing. I was just like, I have a two and a half hour drive and I just have to go. That so was it. my my experience of the like night right after Vibe Camp mm-hmm. was just fucking such whiplash because like vibe camp ended i got on the bus to the airport right and i had first of all i had a solid conversation with a guy on the bus like someone just sat next to me and we just ended up having like a fucking good conversation he was like oh cool like he was like oh yeah i like i'm jewish i like was in china for a while and i asked him about what that was like he was like yeah the chinese have all these great stereotypes of jews they love us and i just just talked about this fucking great (laughs) then i then i um Got to the airport and it was like, oh shit, I actually have way more time to my flight than I thought. And then a friend pulled me in to their Airbnb group to just hang out for a while. And I had some fucking great conversations with that group. Like, it was, we, like we sort of like, we just like talked a lot longer and got deeper than I was able mm-hmm. to get most of the time at Vibe Camp just because it was just longer and it was like the mm-hmm. same group, you know, there weren't people like constantly coming in and out. Then on my actual flight, I had to take a connection through Salt Lake City and I ended up next to i ended up uh there was one other vibe camper on there two other vibe campers on that flight actually <laughs> just randomly and one of them i started chatting with him was like i'm gonna switch seats so i end up next to you so we just sat next to each other the whole flight had a fucking amazing conversation it was like oh, really wow. really fucking good and then i'm i'm in salt lake city kind of basking in the afterglow be like yeah that was like fucking awesome and then i find out by scrolling through twitter um there's this there's this girl i who is basically one of my exes um, who I was hoping to get back in touch with. And I sent her a DM like a couple weeks back being like, Hey, want to want to catch up? And I find out in this moment, as I'm fucking like dying from lack of sleep in the middle of the Salt Lake city fucking airport, I find out that she blocked me. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm just sitting here being like, ah, (laughs) I had to go from like the multiple days of just kind of like <laughs> unconditional acceptance and just kind of constant un I had like a pretty much uninterrupted series of good vibes to being like oh she fucking blocked me she thinks i'm a piece of shit or something <laughs> like felt so bad and i was like again i was like in the middle of the airport i was like my brain was not working because i was on running on no sleep i was like i can't i have to wait here like another hour for my flight and i can't like go there's nowhere I can go to like sob my eyes out about this. So I'll, I just have to like fucking sit here and sit with this feeling and be like, what did I fucking do? Like, I mean, I kind of have a guess, but I was like, what did I fucking do? Like, why does the universe fucking hate me all of a sudden? Like, it just felt really fucking bad. Mm-hmm. And then it felt that way the, the, on my second flight home. And it was just fucking, so that was how my vibe camp ended. <laughs> That's tragic. Wow. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> But it got better after I actually got some sleep. So that was yeah. I was so worn out, and I think I'm still dehydrated. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I'm like still I'm like catching up on sleep. water <laughs> for the yeah. last like three or four days, and I, I also like I came home, slept that first night, um, and then the next day I went on a little day trip, and I stayed in a hotel with a, a good friend of mine. Hey. And this was a nice bougie hotel. So Wait, was it was this, like, was this good friend your boyfriend or? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so he like picks oh up this like, bougie hotel, and I'm like, uh, I'm like, I'm just like extending my vacation. So I like, <laughs> go, I like went. We went on this little day trip to the state of the super bougie hotel. And listen, I'm like a cat. I can sleep pretty much anywhere, no issue. Like, you know, I'm a hard sleeper. Ken can attest. Like, 
I sleep like the dead. <laughs> I tossed and turned in this hotel bed all night. I think I maybe got maybe 45 minutes of like decent sleep the whole night. Oh, it was man. terrible. Oh my God. And I woke up with a pinched nerve in my neck. So my oh. neck hurts. Yeah. And I was like, this sucks. The real world sucks. I want to this go back actually, to the shitty camp mattress. I've actually had this happen multiple times where I've like <laughs> gone to an event that was like super cool, you know, and like I mm -hmm. got like I had all these great experiences and like and then afterwards I'm literally so stimulated that I can't fall asleep until I like process it. Like I just have to write about it mm -hmm. or else I can't fucking sleep. <laughs> I started like I'm the hardest thing for me right now is I'm trying to catch up on all this correspondence that I kind of started. So mm -hmm. and the other problem for me is that, OK, I met some people and like everybody wore their badges the first day and like introduced each other and they introduced themselves as so and so the first day. And then people started like not wearing the badges. Yeah. I don't believe in this practice because <laughs> because I met. Badges. I met so many people so quickly that even though I'm like a face account and stuff like people know me, but I don't I'll, I didn't like now I know. OK, this guy that looks like this, I know him and I know him well, but I didn't make the connection sometimes between like who he actually is account wise. So people are yeah. messaging me like, hey, I met you at so and so. And I'm like, I don't remember which one you were, you yeah. know, and it's like it's not yeah. that I didn't enjoy you. If I saw your face, I would know who you are. But then I'm like, I'm like in the DMs, like, can you send me your face? Like, I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 I'm sorry, yeah, for sure. you know, you said I'm, just... I'm a federal agent and uh, <laughs> you, but, you know, it's like badges. I'm like a uh, very important. Just trying to do like the Bill Clinton thing of like connecting like who is who and remembering like who's got what going on and all this stuff and yeah, trying yeah, to like yeah. reach back and be like, hey, I think I met you here. It was nice to talk to you, blah, blah, blah. So I'm trying to like actually solidify these into like real connections yeah. for the future. Um, That's what's up. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's like. But in a good way, it's yeah, just a lot like my Twitter correspondence was already a lot to keep up with. And now it's like tripled. Yeah. So. <laughs> I was really worried I would drop somebody. I'm like, there are so many people I want to talk to. And like, I really, I haven't done this yet, but I really might set up the spreadsheet. I really think it might be time. Do it. I have I feel a, like so I'm... many. <clears throat> Go ahead. I have a spreadsheet for people in the uh, film industry. Nice. Because, yeah, that's uh, what's up. I'm just, you know, partially because, you know, when it's time to like uh, reach out to people to work for me, I'm like, how many actors do I like actually know? And I'm like, I feel like <laughs> I meet them every set. But then, like, you know, it's just... They become impossible to keep track of, yeah. Yeah, yeah you gotta... So, I just not... hope I don't end up sort of developing, like, the Eichen response of, like, <laughs> I just don't see your DMs, I'm sorry. You have to talk to me on main if you want to talk to me. Because, like, I do, like, really cherish a lot of the conversations that I've had with people in DMs and stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, and having... Mm -hmm. I had open DMs for a really long time. I can't do that anymore because I get too many, like, complete creepazoids. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. But, you know, and just wieners... Just Wiener. pictures of wieners. Really? So, Does that ever work? Has that no, ever worked I've for never, any I'm, person? No, at all. I have never no, gotten okay. a picture of a wiener and said, ah, yes, I'm interested. You know? Okay, but like, a, a picture of wiener always works. Because the point <laughs> isn't to have sex with them. It's to be, it's to force someone to recognize you, like, sexually and have a response. <laughs> even if the response is disgust. Whoa, Are you steel manning? Deep. Are you steel manning the dick pic position? It's not a, awesome. it's not oh, a shit, steel was, man. I'm just saying, you know. Uh, I was worried about this. Zoom is gonna kick us out in ten minutes. Oh, this yeah. is terrible. We can switch bastards. to we can switch to Discord. All right. I what like were we talking about? I like this better because it feels like the blondes are ganging up on QC. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and That's we're back, funny. by the way. <laughs> so, um, what were we talking about? I'm really good. Well, at I'm close five I camp actually, feelings. Close five camp. I actually had a question. I had a question for you, Darb. So you said uh, that you like, I'm not sure what the exact words you use, but you were like, you felt like a different person at Vibe Camp and you wanted to make sure to kind of like carry that into the rest of your life. And I guess I'm, I'm I want to know like, what are the differences? Like what, what's sort of, what's new about new Darb? So without like turning this into like a total downer, like, uh -huh. <laughs> The last like eight, nine months of my life have been like a pretty much a nonstop tragedy. And Ken can attest to this. Like I pretty much haven't gone what what is it, like more than like three weeks without like a new fresh tragedy of some kind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it was like <laughs> breakup, death of lifelong mentor, um, tragic traumatic bad haircut and um yeah. no, <laughs> like, yeah, an yeah. increasing horror of severity. <laughs> assault grandma died um uh of like a terrible breakup like it just a whole like it's just been an, an a nightmare um and so 
in all that, I pretty much got to spend some time like just, I guess, navel gazing and hermiting and writing and like focusing on trying to figure out like what, how I got here. Yeah. Um, and like how I got to this like <laughs> bottom of this pit of despair. <laughs> and, uh, it's like, you know, part of that is sort of like acknowledging the things that you did that made it your fault. That sounds like really heinous, but I mean, in the sense that like certain things got me here and, uh, they were things that I did and it doesn't mean I deserved a bunch of awful shit to happen to me, but it does mean that I should take responsibility for what I did have, you know, what responsibility I did have in it. Right. So I spent a lot of time with that, especially like December was sort of like the ego death, dark night of the soul kind of moment for me. Uh, that month was not, it was not a good time to be my friend and God bless Ken for <laughs> sticking it out. It was okay. Um, it was Ken. Let's go. Yeah. But like the thing I, so I kind of came to camp like, and I'm still fresh off like my grandmother's death and a whole bunch of stuff with her estate and this house that I'm buying, maybe not buying, you know, I'm going back and forth, a whole bunch of stuff. So I was just like, <sighs> okay. And then I was super nervous and I was like, everybody's going to meet me and be like, you're such a downer. Like you're such a, you're such a <laughs> letdown compared to the account or oh, something, no. which is really <laughs> funny. Cause I'm not like, oh. not me on the account. I'm not like, I would say if anything, I'm probably... You know what I mean? Like, I'm not. Yeah, it's like yeah, you yeah, meet yeah. you in person, and it's like, why are you depressed? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I feel so like I was seriously... expecting a much more fun account out of you. <laughs> your your Twitter and IRL vibes are like extremely congruent. I just want to say, like, I feel like the translation was basically perfect. And this is like, I mean, I had an advantage because we'd had a couple video calls. So I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. I know this is, I know this is gonna be fine. But like, it was fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, totally okay. it's all it's great. That's a comfort. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I just like uh, you know on on Friday we were all at the bar getting ready to head to check in, and I was like, and I had to just give it up to Joe's purple shirt for just being the full on inspiration for this. But I was like, when she came and vi she came and visited me and um, stayed the night with me, and uh, when she was doing a cross country road trip and she just drove right through my town, so it was perfect. She got to stay with me for a night, and we spent like twenty four hours together, like arm in arm, gal pals, and uh, I was so struck by like how warm and like friendly she was and uh she was just so quiet and just listened and i felt so like invited to just be whatever and i felt like it was fine wow. and i was like okay mm -hmm. i think this is kind of the kind of person that i should like model myself after at camp because like what i want is to kind of be oh. the person that i wish that i had like had at summer camp oh. and i was like I'm not going to be like a nervous wreck or dig for compliments or be self-conscious about anything or whatever i'm just going to show up and there was a moment early Saturday morning when uh, we were doing archery. I was over there for several archery stories that have been on the timeline. And, uh, <laughs> what big I wasn't archery account, shoot. you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I like I wanted to shoot, but I also really didn't want to shoot because I've I did a little bit of archery as like a kid. But I'm like I know I'm not going to remember any of it, and I know people know that I shoot guns, and I was like people are going to think that I'm going to be good at this. Uh... And the the worst possible thing is I realized I was like, what I'm afraid of here is that I'm afraid of being seen trying and failing. It's very middle uh, school. You yeah, don't want to be seen trying, feel, so you though. can't be seen failing, right? I feel, though. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to want to shoot this fucking target. I'm going to do it. And I did it. And I was and I, get, I was like, I'm going to give myself permission to just suck ass, to just be terrible. <laughs> and guess what? I delivered on that front. Um, yeah. you know, but it was like super <laughs> fun. And I did it like three more times just because it felt good to draw the bow back, you know? Nice. And I was like, from that point on, I was like, okay, I'm unstoppable. I don't have to worry about anything. And from that point, hey. it just became my job to like, as like a pretty girl extrovert to be like, you come over here, be in this group. You come mm. over here. You two hey. talk, you know, like just, that was like, and that was like what I wanted. And the, when I was talking, you know, we, everybody, cause everybody loves to have the, well, what did you think I'd be like? What am I actually like conversation? Mm. Everybody had that conversation all weekend, you know? Um, everybody was just like, you're so warm online and you're like even warmer in person. And it was never like, nobody, listen, nobody told me I was pretty all weekend. Everybody told me all weekend that I was like warm and inviting and kind. And I was like, this is actually like what I would much rather hear. And, uh, and I realized the reason nobody told, told me that is because I didn't feel, they didn't feel like I needed to hear it. Yeah. And I was, that's because I wasn't giving off the subconscious signal, like, please validate please me or I'm going to have a heart attack, <laughs> you know? So it was like, mm -hmm. I kind of wondered, like, when I came home, I was like, am I going to be able to take any of that with me? Like, can I still mm -hmm. be that person? And I hopped into, you know, a little trip with my my boyfriend, who I've currently up until this point really been harboring a lot of feelings that he's like really just too good for me. And uh, 
we, oh, Ken's face. We have, we have well, you know, um, um, but I just sort of like kicked that because I was, we were, you know, just like hanging out and talking. And I was like, I think up until this point, I thought of the relationship and you as something that was happening to me rather than something that I was like involved in oh. that I had like equal say in. I've been waiting for like stimulus, good or bad to respond to rather than like just doing what I want. And, uh, we're not doing that anymore. Hey. And that felt like really, he was like, did you feel that way? I was like, listen, <laughs> in the theater of my mind, okay, <laughs> there's a lot of weird shit going on. <laughs> in the theater of Darbara's mind. <laughs> it's terrible. It's a nightmare. Don't come in. Don't buy tickets. <laughs> Boycott the show, you know. But uh, it, like, it feels like I, so far I have gotten a ticket home with me. And um, mm. I realized over the weekend, like I, I was, you know, hanging out with all these people. And what I kept saying over and over again is like, why do you doubt yourself? Like, you're so handsome, talented, pretty, like good at things. Like, look at you. You know, like I was yeah. saying this to everybody. And I was like, yeah. literally, I can't imagine anything that would get in your way. And I was like, maybe, Darbra, we should have <laughs> been saying this to ourselves all along. Because <laughs> everybody's been saying yeah. it to you. <laughs> And uh, oh. so just like admitting that and sort of like trying to embody it. I think I am going to be able to keep that with me. <sighs> Come here, you big baby. Yeah. Get your stretch. That was, that was nice. That's so that's exactly like what I was like tweeting oh. about or whatever that like, you know, cute especially he liked it. And yeah. He was like, I need more of these. So I was like, maybe yeah, I'll make yeah, one yeah, for yeah. girls or whatever. But, you know, it's like talking about how like you meet just like the coolest fucking person you've ever met at five camp. And, you know, <laughs> and, and like the guys are like, I don't know. I'm having a lot of trouble with girls, even though they have, like, beautiful faces and they have, like, an amazing, like, fucking coding job or whatever. And they're, like, tall and they're making great conversation. And it's, like... Yeah. And then the girls are, like, yeah, I can't believe you guys, like, I don't know, like me. And they're just, like, you know, they're, like, beautiful they're making great conversation. Beautiful. Yeah. You know? And it's, like, I don't know if you know what these hoes on Tinder are like, but you're, like, top of the line. Yeah. You're, like, a, you're like a top sure. of the line female. Okay. Okay. So this is so fast. So hearing th this back to back, first of all, Darp, that was that felt that was so cool to hear. Just yeah. like oh, friendliness. But also this plus me re like remembering Ken's tweets it has me wondering like like I wonder if that was one of the things that was kind of being selected for. Like maybe the kinds of people who showed up at Vibe Camp are the kinds of people who are one amazing and two constantly underestimating themselves. Yeah. <laughs> maybe that's just the squad. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Self doubt <laughs> game. Self doubt game. You know, like there, there really is something about like the people that on Twitter that I feel like should shut up and take a second are the ones who speak <laughs> the loudest, and the ones who I think are gonna like shape tomorrow are the ones who are like, mm, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, there really yeah, is something. What is it like? Wild. I think it's like the a fucking... Yates line. Like all the the smart ones are like full of doubt, and all the, the you know what the is fools it? The... are like full of arrogance. You know, the or like all conviction, something like that. The yes, best yeah, like all that. convection while the worst are full of passion. I, I don't yes. know. Yeah. I don't know the things, yeah. but that's. But I must be. I must yeah. be the worst because like, let me. That's like some fucking. Oh man! Like I, I tweeted a little about this, and Sasha responded. You know, the he's done. He's done. He's doing this writing coaching. He was like, let me see if I can remember what he said. He said, "I know, I've been worked with at least three Pulitzer level talents who are just quietly wondering whether they should disturb the universe." And I was just like, Sasha. Oh no! Yeah, oh, yeah. Just, honestly, like, okay. So one other thought, another thought I have about this is like, I I really got to enjoy like one of my favorite things I got to do this weekend was just tell people how much I liked them in general. Like, just so many different ways. Of, like, here's all these different ways that I like you, bro. Like, and everyone was just so like, I feel like everyone was like really refreshed. Like, oh my god, like, huh? You know, like especially the <laughs> yeah. guys. I really, I really wanted to gas up all the dudes, especially just like my boys really need their one compliment every five years or whatever you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. and i was happy to give it to them but it's like it's like something from I'm, the office <clears throat> only 364 days to the next vibe camp compliment <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> <Shit. laughs> but I'm, I'm having this you know i'm having these experiences just telling people like oh my god i really like your writing i really like your tweets i just really like you mm. generally and just being like this should be why isn't this just happening all the time this yeah. is terrible like we could just be doing this normally yeah like um good. jumping off of that i actually so i met ayla and after apologizing for her blocking me i told her thank you because she was like one of the big reasons why i was in this area of twitter you know it was mm. like it was her and like you cute and it was like yeah so you know, and i was like 
you know, I was like, yeah, you know, thank you. And she just looked, she looked really bewildered. Like, it, it, I don't know if I'm reading too much into it, but she looked like sort of like confused or taken aback. But I was like, no, thank you. Your, your account is how I found all these people here. And it's a big reason why I'm like here. So I owe a lot to you. So thank you. And she was just oh. like, she's a little taken aback. And I'm like, do people not, like tell you this? Because like, <laughs> yeah. Cause you're one of like, cause like it was maybe like one of like three or four accounts that everybody here got to through, you know what I mean? So I was like, mm. hmm. this is why I want that Twitter genealogy. I want that big tree yeah, I of totally who see got that. who into Twitter because then we could mm. find, we could be like, we could quantify it. Be like, who are the most important influences? Is it, is it like all Visa? Is it like Visa and then Ayla mm-hmm. and then a couple of the people? Like, I really wonder, I want to know. I'm, yeah. That's, yeah. And if there's any other. Yeah pipelines to them from yeah. like other areas or whatever you know yeah like, yeah mm-hmm. yeah because i know that like you know tof brought up like visas like something that visa said in one of his podcast and just like a smash podcast or whatever like so it's more than you know yeah be really cool i know visa also talks about that with like musicians like the genealogy of influence and how he says a lot mm. of people don't necessarily try and track that and how it like i think it, he said like an american rock music it all goes back to like Little Richard or whatever. Mm-hmm. Nice. I was like, it does. Whoa. <laughs> That's awesome. Little <laughs> that. Richard. Yeah, dude. I used, like, I'm like is it little I'm Richie? so fast. <laughs> I'm super white. I'm sorry. Super no, it's little Richard. He's like just okay, like a okay. Tasmanian devil on cocaine. Nice. He's just like ooh, 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 like all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I really, I just, I'm so stoked about the idea of getting to trace out all these influences because every little. Every little like thing is like you know a little act of kindness that someone did that like you know begot another yeah. act of kindness that it's just this whole little web of kindness. It's, it would be great <laughs> to just have it all in one place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <sighs> Bless you. Thank you. Yeah. And there is like there's such a it is so <laughs> like uh, what's the word? It's so like insular. You know, it's like. At the same time that like when people get like brought in, they're like, what is going on here? And it's like, no, there's like a total second language being spoken here. You know, <laughs> like there's a totally different line of like jargon and like memes mm. and all that, that like if I said shape rotator to my coworkers, they'd be like, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? You know what I mean? But like, I, you know how many shape rotator jokes I, and like, like Goblin said, where you're hearing the timeline, like in real time, like you're hearing people just yeah. say bangers, like left and right, left and right, left and right. And that was so like true you know like across the weekend is like i just heard some i laughed harder this weekend i almost pissed myself multiple times i did piss myself once you know like laughing that. i don't i didn't i wasn't gonna admit it when i was there but i'll admit it now that i'm home you know like i pissed myself laughing at uh i want to say saturday night uh right. like and i had to go change <laughs> pissed myself laughing. Go change bangers <laughs> of the irl bangers that's amazing uh, <laughs> but you know like and that's the you know it's just so it's been really re- like I've really like found it really rewarding like reaching out to people like after the fact and being like I hope you know like I enjoyed your company like so much we were at X Y Z place at X Y Z time yeah, you know and people yeah. are like really and I'm like yes like <laughs> I would yeah. kill to be able to get a beer with you every weekend no, yeah. you know it, it's oh, crazy because yeah. you have so many like all weekend it's like you're just jumping from conversation to conversation and even on, like the last day I was still meeting people for the first time yeah and for stuff, sure at closing like... ceremonies I met three people. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Let me introduce you to two of them, yeah. But it's yeah, like, thank you. You just, you know, but it's still like so it feel it feels so surreal cuz it's like surely some of these conversations must be like, you know, like there's no way we could be this excited to talk to each other. We can't be having as much fun as we're seeming, both from like the person across from you and also you, you know. And it's like, well they've been meeting people all weekend. How can they like appear like to be like nice to see me or whatever or not nice to be happy to see me but then it's like no they absolutely are and it's like i remember them and it's like no yeah i had like you know i had a great time meeting like all these people you know what i mean yeah and it's like it really it was exactly what it appeared to be and it it appeared to be too (laughs) too true you know yeah but uh (laughs) but yeah it was really um by the way, my uh, but my post vibe camp experience, um, I like, I was like catatonic. I just got like a lot of sleep, but I would like wake up and like check Twitter and have like fifty notifications, <laughs> slam another yeah. banger down. 
and then go back to bed. <laughs> go back to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> I dreamed about people all week. All week oh, I've just shit. been dreaming about people, and I'm like, wow. Everybody like exists in my subconscious now, so that's must be really fun for them. Yep. Um, <laughs> I only dream about yeah. Twitter people if they're like archetypal representations. That's so funny. Like, that's well, super distinguished of you. But now they're just my friends. Someone, that I dream okay, about, so, so some <laughs> someone I, someone I met at Vibe Camp told me they there was like there was a reply that they were that they wrote in response to a thread somewhere. I'm trying mm. to be vague, but they told me they were like I was about to not write this because it seemed too embarrassing. And I was like, dude, don't mm. talk. It's like, mm -hmm. who says? It? Like, this is just like too much. And uh, then she was like, and then I I heard of your voice in my head, QC, and you were saying you can write whatever you want in replies. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then I posted it, and it's Luke. fine, and no one's got it. Go, no one's got it go ham me. in the replies, Luke. <laughs> go ham in the replies. No, she was like, you were like Mufasa in the line. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll take it. I'll absolutely take it. I would love to be Mufasa. That dude is having a good time. You know what I mean? Like, oh yeah, that dude was just balling. <laughs> but that was well, so was nice. I was like, like, oh we, yeah. Sorry. There was just this energy of like everybody was looking for an excuse to jump in. Like on Friday night, especially, it was like everybody was looking for an excuse to like jump in and be and go hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was like it was up to the little the little psychopathic extroverts who must not be <laughs> named. Um, uh, to just like completely lose it in, in a way mm -hmm. that everybody could see. And it was like, from that point on, it was like, go team, you know? Yeah. And from that point, I didn't like, I don't feel like I even, at that point I was like, I was bought in and I was like, okay, and I want everybody else to buy in as hard as I did. And that was sort of oh, like where so I went nice. everywhere on Saturday. So everybody cool. was just yeah. as, and like there was this, so like there's this thing that reminds me so much of being in Thespian Festival in high school, which was where theater kids like, or theater kids, you know, so like the net doesn't just catch like kids who want to do theater. It also catches like just complete social rejects and like weirdos, you know, and th this sounds mean, but I mean, like for real, like that's where you see kids <laughs> who are just like being a furry at noon on a Tuesday, you know, like in nice. public at, at nice. the age of 17, you know, so like that's just the only place on earth you get stuff like that, you know, there's, I feel like there's like a parody is like Griff Raff, street rat theater kid. <laughs> <laughs> But it's, like, very that, you know? Uh, so, like, you go to these, like, theater workshops at Thespian Festival, and you've got, like, kids who are like me who are, like, serious. They already have three Shakespearean monologues memorized because they know they're going to college auditions in, like, half an hour, and they're just, like, business, you know? <laughs> and then you've got these kids who are just, like, ooh. You know, like, they're just being wild and, like, reading their fan fiction at this, like, playwriting you know, That's awesome. workshop. Oh, my and you're God. Like, I should have been a the fucking theater kid. Well, I should have Dude, you should have. I Everybody on Teapot should have been. I'm, I'm not kidding. Been, yeah. 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 And so there was this like, but there was always this like, okay, we're going to be patient with like the complete social rejects because like they're <laughs> one of us, you know, like they're one of us. And this sounds this like This is the cheating, only leading man I... archetype we have. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we get to turn our nose up at one subgroup and it's these idiots. You know? <laughs> like as theater kids, like we have one superiority complex and it's like, but every theater department everywhere has like a couple of those, you know? Oh. And... Teapot felt like similar in that way where like occasionally you saw things that like could be classified as like cringe or I saw people talking about seeing things that were cringe on the timeline and it's like yeah there were things that were cringe that went down but it was just like one of us one of yeah. us one and of it's us. like what what makes yeah. me cringe today you know may be my shit tomorrow so there was this very like <laughs> we we are all equal sinners in our cringe and so we're all just gonna like let it rock you know <laughs> and I feel like I saw that everywhere I went and I was like yeah I love it let the cringe yeah. flow through you oh I love it this whole so <laughs> when the cringe passes, yeah. only I will remain. The, <laughs> this combination of the like, first of all, the like, I'm I'm all in, and I'm going to try to pull everyone else in, and then all this also this combination of the like the theater and the cringe. It reminds me so at a, at a pre party the night before, uh, I was I was reflecting on just like like high school shit coming up basically. You know what I mean? It was like it was the first time oh, I've yeah. been for, in a long time I've been in an environment where I was like where I was like. I noticed myself sort of automatically classifying people as like cool versus like less cool oh, yeah. or some That's shit. So you know what common. I mean? Like, there were so many people. It's fucking. Yeah. Like I don't have that problem because I never went to high school, but everyone who did. <laughs> no. Wait, really? Holy shit. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm homeschooled. Did I tell you this? Oh, whack. No. Well, that's whack. That's whack. <laughs> My bad. My bad. I will but never let's cool. forget it. It's cool to know. All the, cool. all, the, uh, uh, all the virgin school goers, <laughs> they all had the same experience where it, they're getting like high school or junior high flashbacks or whatever. Because it's it's so funny, right? Because in, a, in an environment like this, and I've been in a couple of the events that were also like this, there's just such a funny mix of 
I mean, there's a couple of different kind of clusters, but on the one hand, you have like experienced burners who are like fucking hot as shit and like have their Whoa. outfits on point and like just look really cool and interesting. And on the other hand, you have like like rationalists who like are maybe like shy and younger and like I'm trying not to be too mean here. I just wanted like there just was a <laughs> contingent like this. I'm just trying to be accurate. Like there's shyer, younger, awkward, like less confident, like you know. Mm-hmm. didn't know how to dress and i put i was like that i'm still kind of like that i still don't really know how to fucking dress right like so i have a lot of i have a lot of i have a lot of uh sympathy for these guys but i, I was wondering actually before vibe camp i was like is how how are they going to get along is there going to be like a i was worried that there would be people there were going to be like clicks you know what i mean that like the cool yeah. kids were just going to kind of like hang out with the cool kids and then some other and then like the the less cool kids or whatever would kind of be left out in the dust mm-hmm. and um Actually, I had an experience uh, the night before that just kind of like shifted it a little for me where like I, I talked to some people I kind of might not have normally talked to like a two or three years ago when I was like a less mature person or whatever. I was like, fuck it. I, maybe my judgments are stupid. I'll just try being friendly and see what happens. And I just had really good conversations, just like really like lovely. And I was like, wow, you're just like really cool, actually. I was told my my first impression of you based on how you looked like my shitty fucking stereotypes, which is like completely wrong. And, uh, and having that experience right before Vibe Camp was super helpful because I came into Vibe Camp mm. being like, fuck it, I'm just going to not do that. I'm just going to be friendly to everybody and see what happens. Mm-hmm. And I did also a little bit feel like it was, uh, yeah, kind of my responsibility as like, uh, I don't know how to say this, as like a, one of the bigger accounts there. But also I just knew, I knew I was going to know a lot of people there. Like I knew I was going to, I was going to feel very comfortable socially. And that, like, I was, I was not really in any danger of feeling like rejected or or, mm-hmm. out, or outside of the. So mm-hmm. I was like, okay, well, for me to be in that situation, if I feel like like I gotta lift everyone else up if I can, you know, and just yeah. like, just be fucking friendly if someone if someone comes up to me, introduce myself, get to talk a little bit, and like, and I think I did that. I hope I did that. I think I think I did okay. I think I did okay. <laughs> I felt that way from you. Thank, mm-hmm. thank you. Yeah, yeah I uh, I feel like, like the same wait well i like also when i was like a kid you know i always thought it was like i was super extroverted and i always thought it was like the uh i feel like the peak of something about like the movies and books that i read when i was a kid i felt like the peak of morality was like finding a kid who wanted to be part of the group who wasn't who was just sort of on the sidelines going and then like being like hey come on come talk with us or whatever you know yeah yeah so yeah yeah Yeah. i feel like i mean i don't know maybe that's a little (laughs) bit disrespectful to bring up but it's also just like i don't know like uh well there were people who were looking for an excuse you know they were like they wanted to but they were looking for somebody to be like yeah this is what the cool the cool kids are it's cool to care it's cool to care it's cool to care oh yeah come on bitch come on come on up here but like i was expecting to get egoed by big accounts like left and right because i'm like not egoed (laughs) <laughs> you know, like a big account. So people are like, I don't fucking know who you are, you know, that kind of shit. Um, I was yeah. wrong. Um, but also like, you know, I, there were several people who walked up to me who were like, I know who you are. And I was like, I have, I have no idea who you are. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it wasn't, and it was like, the thing to me is like, I just felt like really sad about it. Cause I was like, I would love to, I just don't at this moment, you know? Mm-hmm. And like, there were a lot of people who were like, you don't follow me. And I'm like, fuck, okay, well give me your handle and I will, you know? <laughs> so it was like, but it was like, that was the thing. It was for me is I just like, I wanted everybody to feel as included as I wanted to feel. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that generally worked out pretty well. I didn't see, I don't feel like I saw anybody, like, I didn't mean to ego anybody. <laughs> if if you felt egoed by me at Vibe Camp, I'm so sorry. Egoed. Just DM me. Um, <laughs> if, you felt, if you felt egoed by me, I'm this way in real life, too, and I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not, not going like, to be able to know, change. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, nothing's changing here, so get used to it. But, you know, I, uh... I didn't feel like anybody was like too good to talk to me, which was really, which mm. was really nice. Yeah. And mm. that was, that was I tried big... to not be too good for anybody to talk to me, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was, that was a big thing. That's like here as well as a lot of like my favorite communities that I sort of have like compared this to have all been like, no one's too good to talk to anyone. Like in like yeah. in the smash community, there is definitely like a hierarchy based on like whose house you're at. <laughs> number one, <laughs> and number two, who's uh who's good. <laughs> like who's the best player and stuff you know because uh you know if there's like five people in one setup it's the the loser switches out or whatever so the really good players are gonna get to like sit down and you know because that's just like arcade culture carried over whatever right 
but like mm -hmm. you know my first tournament i tell the story all the time because i think it's just it's just so cool i you know i went there i went to like my uh sweet mate from college he, we crashed at his grandma's house and then we went to the tournament and then i played for like 20 hours barely getting any sleep and i just didn't win a single game because i was so new and i was so trash but then <laughs> like and it, at the very end, it was like there's like two out of towners who came into the tournament who were like they got you know first and second they were clearly like super good. And one of them taught me like you know he was like showing me a few things in the game and then afterwards we went to uh, like I think Denny's or something you know in the middle of the night got like a table of like there was like twenty people you know it's whoever but it was like you know we were all equals when we were sitting around and you know there was you know even though there is like a clear hierarchy it's like no one's too good to talk to you and it's the same thing in like a yeah i guess like uh the film community like the little film circle where i'm at in um in shreveport is like something that i really appreciated the first time i went there is like you know you would you could get into random conversations with a film director and then like an actor and then like a guy who and then like somebody's mom who was just nice to talk to <laughs> who just happens to be there you know like uh mm -hmm. and you know it's nobody's uh it's just so small that nobody has a sense of being too good to talk to it. So I think that's very, yeah. that, that was definitely here at vibe camp. You know, it's, there was no one who was too good to talk to you and like, sure. yeah. Nice. There's also like, I know that like I come, I'm sort of a loaded gun when it comes to like approaching me, like in the sense that like, <laughs> in the sense that I have a gun, and I might shoot you. <laughs> in the sense that I'm carrying a gun at all times. <laughs> but I mean, like I'm a, I'm a pretty girl. And I think, most men that are playing like 4D chess in so far as like connecting with people like are like, oh, she's used to that. Like she's used to random dudes walking up to her and like talking to her or whatever. And so um, I was like kind of afraid on the first. I was like, I don't want anybody to think like because I'm like a pretty girl and maybe a well-known account that I like don't want to talk to them. So I was like, that dude over there has looked at me twice. I'm going to go talk to him. You know, nice. so like hey. there was that kind of thing where I was like, this is uh. this is I know this is a little different for me than the average like vibe camper, I guess. But uh, it was like, I don't know. And then I spent most of my time like just following the girls around being like my wife, you know, my wife. But, <laughs> that's my wife. My wife. Um, yeah. You know, but that was like something I was really happy that I could do because like that's a little bit of like a superpower that not everybody has. But I was just like, I'm just going to like bust up mm. in people's shit and be like, hi, <laughs> and sometimes drunk, like wrecking ball into a conversation. <laughs> because no, I, I just so didn't good. expect like anybody to recognize me. And I got out of my car and three people yelled my name like immediately. And at the bar before I got to check in, I said something about like, I don't even think anybody's like going to know it's me. That's why I wore a bandana. And Jane was like, there's going to be a line of people to meet you. And I was like, Jane, no, no. <laughs> Catch me. I don't even have my badge on yet. And three people have like run at me like full speed. And I was like, and everybody was just like, it's so nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, dude. okay, we're going to be fine this weekend. Like we don't have anything to worry yeah. about. And yeah. it was just, it was just oh, fun from that point on. Yeah. That's so nice. That's so yeah. Cool. Oh man. Yeah, so, I would really. Oh, sorry. Um. Well, I was. I was just gonna. You know, say. Um. We can get. We can circle back to it or whatever, depending on what you had to say. But I was thinking. You know. Um. All of our expectations for each other, and then like the reality of me and them or whatever. I thought that'd be something fun to do or whatever, because you know. This is our sure, first time sure. meeting you and each other in real life. That is true. Yeah. 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 Sure. Happy to do. What did you want to say, QC? Yeah. Juice. I forgot. I forgot already. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> Brain's still kind of fried. <laughs> I don't know. I think. I think in my head, I was kind of expecting because, like, to me, you were like our in, you know, to to the community. So yeah. I was kind of expecting like. I don't want to say ego because I've Zoom called you and I know you aren't going to be like an ego person. Um, yeah. I think I was just expecting you to be like. Less like easily approachable and like kind. Maybe, oh. and I expect you maybe be a bit more cerebral and less like integrated and fun mm. and social. And uh. you were like definitely cerebral, but like in a way that was like not. It was very like invitational. It wasn't like I need to go over here and be in this corner by myself because I'm brooding. And I've met that Twitter <laughs> guy, and he sucks, you know. So I would like, and you were just like very like I'm gonna brood right here in this group. And we were like let's brood, <laughs> you know, let's talk about well, it. You know like, what I mean, I want to brood right here in this group. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> So it was like, that was really nice. And also just being like your cabin mate 
It was yeah. super funny because we like when you when you were like, hey, we need two more people for the cabin. I was like, cool. Who's in the cabin? And you were like, celebrity, celebrity, celebrity. <laughs> Coach Nevada for three years. Celebrity, celebrity. I was just like, <laughs> fuck. But everybody was super nice, you know? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And super cool. And we had a baby, which was dope. That was so good. That was the baby so good. was. Oh my god, baby was. I think you baby weren't. In your you, I think you weren't there. Okay, so on Saturday night, fucking like, I think Igan and Celine must have like put out an open invitation, like, "Hey, everyone, come meet the baby. We'll like hang out with the baby." And it was so good. It was so good. There were just like fifteen people just standing around adoring the baby, and she's just having the time of her fucking life. <laughs> and everyone just like feels really fucking good about it. <laughs> I don't know if you. <laughs> Yeah, that was, oh, it was just a magical experience. Pronatalist okay. gang rise up, you know, <laughs> but, for sure. But also to, 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 to go back a little bit, like, I'm confused. I'm So I, I, I've, I've gotten a decent number of people's impressions of me now. Uh-huh. And, like, I guess one thing is that Vibe Camp caught me when I was in a really fucking good mood for other reasons. Because, like, I've been really, like, uh, I'm going to probably write more about this later, but I've been really, like, trying to improve my shit in a bunch of ways lately like just Mm -hmm. dealing with a bunch of feelings but also like trying to cultivate healthier habits and stuff so i actually was already coming in feeling pretty fucking good and then just Mm -hmm. i like it was so clear to me so early on that it was just going to be awesome that i was just like i'm going to be super fucking excited about this and just super high energy i'm going to greet everyone super high energy and i'm just not going to hold back at all of like how much Mm -hmm. i like everybody here (laughs) and that seems to just work out really well i think everyone responded really well to that i'm i hope that i like helped build the the vibe snowball a little in, in that way i think way. you did yeah. mm-hmm. i was always like happy to pop into a group that you were in it was always like a good time and there was a good Aww. chat going on and i was like sick yeah let's go yeah and i definitely wasn't the only one i mean i i i, I remember seeing just so many instances of people being like you know i've i keep saying this but i just keep loving it just like being like oh hi and then they see each other's vibe buy a badges and like, oh my god hi i love you <laughs> <laughs> so cool to see just like wow people just love each other's accounts that's great i'm really glad mm-hmm. and now they get to meet and that's really that's really nice mm-hmm. what so q what did you think of uh what did you think of us or like what were you expecting to uh meet when you met us and then what did you meet first pass you guys were like exactly who i expected you to be in the best way i was just like yeah these are the motherfuckers i could grab a beer with just like anytime <laughs> just mm-hmm. like Aww. that kind of Thanks. but like i i want to i want to explicitly say so uh so leds who sadly was not a vibe camp as far as i know no. um Rip, he, rip, rip to a real one. Wait, rip to a real one. Oh, we Lotus. Lotus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Lotus, sorry. I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't know how you pronounce it either. That's, but yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, he, so if you guys will recall, he pulled me, he pulled me into a, into a call with you guys like months ago. Yeah. Oh, year, and a year ago. A year. Holy fuck. Yeah. Time is not real. <laughs> yeah. So he I pulled, was living with the drug ages dealers. Ago, ages ago, he pulled me into a call with you guys. And like, I got to say that call was like a, kind of lifeline for me because i was so fucking lonely and i like wasn't really talking to anybody and i was just feeling i was just like moping around just really not knowing what to do and like that call was so fun i laughed so much i liked all of you guys so much i just loved like joshing around with you it's like oh my god i forgot that i could have this (laughs) so like i i I guess i've never said this you guys i want to thank you guys for that call because like that really affected me a lot to get to have that just like oh my god that was so fun this is so nice to hang out with my twitter friends on the call (laughs) like i've never gotten i've never i've never had any sense that like that like i was like bigger than you guys or anything like just not nah, like nah i just i just think you guys are great and i was really excited about meeting you guys and then it was just as great as i thought it would be i will say okay so i think darba was like a hundred th- somehow just exactly exactly who i expected and then <laughs> ken i think you were happier than i expected which was great i loved really? seeing, yeah i loved that i loved seeing well, you happy i was like this is so fucking good i'm like so jazzed about this yeah well it's <laughs> like, like uh i think that's a lot of at vibe camp was one of the happiest weekends of my life like i was the first time i was trying to explain it to the to the uh one of our uh normie friends when (laughs) hey some of my best friends are normies like i can use that Mm -hmm. word it's all good for sure yeah yeah you know like when uh i was like yeah there's this one weekend where i like went every day i woke up and i shot sound on like an award a film that would go on to win awards and then every day i would come back and get laid and this is like the weekend i lost my virginity and this weekend was better than that weekend <laughs> <laughs> like yeah 
<laughs> it was just oh, so. Man. It was just. It was a. Uh, I was exceedingly yeah. happy. You know, you so were beaming, is... dude. Well, also, you you're such beaming. a like Debbie Downer on Maine. <laughs> Me? <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least you're like extremely critical. Yeah. And you've always yeah. got like, and you also just the way that you phrase things, it makes it hard to believe that you're like, there's a human being and not a machine in there. Aww, <laughs> that's a little. I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know about that. You guys, it's an earnest machine. You'd be it's like Darbra in the machine. <laughs> the machine. <laughs> you just like Is you're, that you're, you're, like, a your machine stuff is too. Really, <laughs> your stuff is really well thought out, so it seems kind of like bulletproof. Like you're hard to attack. Because you've oh. like really, oh, well. by the time that something has made it to a thought on Maine, usually you've thought it through to a point and you're pretty mm. articulate. So it's like, you seem a bit more like harder to fight with, which is why I think people block or mute you because they're like, <laughs> I can't fight this, this man, you know? <laughs> All Whereas, right, turn like, around, turn around. Ooh, let's go. <laughs> Whereas like in real life, you know, you're like this fucking complete goofball idiot, like a wine <laughs> shirt, like holding two beers with the mustache, you know? So it's like, okay, this is a guy like I can talk to, <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah wow i guess you're right yeah i also uh yeah i think i also have just been like you know less uh well yeah i've been it's like you said you got you got online like during vibe camp and you were like oh god the people at home are writing all these mean political takes like i just gotta unfollow these people like i just can't do this anymore (laughs) yeah it was the timeline during vibe camp well people were like yeah people are just gonna be sitting around on their phones and they absolutely weren't i think some people have actually ran numbers but it's also just like yeah yeah, they ran the numbers yeah (laughs) yeah i'm not i'm not a numbers guy but my people ran the numbers and the numbers were low okay (laughs) and like it was uh so uh like the first it was like i think like the middle of like the second or third day or whatever when i like was in the bathroom or whatever and i checked it and i'm like these people are having a terrible time <laughs> what are you what are you doing you could be at vibe camp having the time of your life and then they're on twitter and it's like well i just think i just think it's funny how in this one politics thing people say this but really they should say that <laughs> and i'm like what's wrong with you Oh no! <laughs> like, and I'm like, yeah. I don't know. And I was like, oh, I've been that guy for like forever or whatever. But you know, it's like, you know, like Twitter is so much better if you're like happier. And then afterwards, it exploded, and everyone it's like, oh my god, I'm so like ironically detached from all these people having an amazing time at Vibe Camp. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like, I feel like there's there's so much like people I. Every time people sort of like complain about everybody tweeting about Vibe Camp, I feel like it doesn't even like register as criticism because I think that like the most of what Vibe Camp was was not something you tweet about. This was actually not a LARP, right? This was actually something mm-hmm. that happened and then people are tweeting about it. So if you're like, <laughs> Felina is just staring at the light. She <laughs> She's loves such it. A cutie. <clears throat> Sorry, but there's a. You know, it's like if the Vibe Camp is this big circle and then everyone's sort of tweeting around it or whatever. If you just look at the tweets, it looks like there's this huge amount of negative space there. But everyone's tweets was just supplementing what was actually going on in real life. And it was just mm-hmm. like, so, you know, there's like, I think like a lot of, you know, it's so interesting because it's like, I just feel like if you weren't there, you just don't get it. Which is, you know. It's very Woodstock in that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, Which is a little unfortunate. Like, I, I do mm-hmm. kind of. There were tweets I was writing that was that were very much like for vibe campers, and there were tweets mm-hmm. I was writing that was trying to kind of like interface between kind of vibe campers and everybody else. Right. But it was it was mm-hmm. tough. Like it would be nice to have somehow had a slightly easier way to like not flood other people's timelines with shit that they don't want. Like yeah, I wasn't really sure how to thread that needle. But also, I don't know. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I could have posted on the Discord, but I knew a lot of people weren't checking the Discord, so I'm like yeah okay i do want to post this on twitter yeah. and like it is relevant to people who weren't at vibe camp like there's sort of there's just general stuff and and also i get it like it's not it doesn't feel that good to be like sitting at home kind of like not having a great time and then like see a bunch of well, other people talking about how it is amazing times yeah. like mm-hmm. doesn't feel good doesn't feel good I'm like this sucks like i it's just it's just it's shitty you know like it produces shitty feelings and I wouldn't be surprised if for some people those shitty feelings turned into like snarky mean tweets and I'm just like yeah that's just no yeah I get it I get yeah. it you don't you don't feel good that's what you're yeah. trying to tell me right now Listen, you don't yeah. feel- bitches hate us because they want to be us <laughs> and they hate us it's they rough hate us. but I get it I, I, well it's like I, I, 
I would try not to put it like that, but like, I mean. <laughs> if I was at home and this had happened, I would have been like, I hate my life for being poor that I couldn't do this. I hate that. Like, you know, I, it would have like stirred up a lot in me. And also, you know, there were like, for me and Ken, who we live so far out of the way of most of teapot. Yeah. I mean, like the closest teapotter to me is three hours away and he's moving. <laughs> like, oh, shit. So, you know, like I'm very, very far away from the nearest like IRL meetup. And that would be with one person. Mm -hmm. So for me, like vibe camp was like a kind of once in a, however often this happens, like opportunity to well, meet these people who are from all over. Waterfall Waterfall under. Under. I'm sorry. So, you know, like <laughs> it's one of those things where for me, this was like huge because I will never have the opportunity to just be in San Fran because I'm yeah. pure. So <laughs> for now, so. Well, you got that boyfriend though. I mean. I do, and right. also I have this book I'm publishing. <coughs> hey, <laughs> hey, you know? hey, so, so I mean, like uh, this was huge for me in that regard because otherwise, this just I would have just never gotten to have this experience. But even so, even if I could go to see everybody in San Francisco or New York City, that's still like what ten percent of the group at one time. Yeah, yeah I have like yeah. this much of the group at one in one place at one time. You know, it's like it's always just going to be. It, when when if when slash if this happens again it's always going to be just so huge and it's like it was so nice also like with Rose talking about that the venue loved us that they thought we were really great yeah. which surprised me because i was really thinking <laughs> like sunday as everything was starting to ramp up into like rave mm -hmm. and drinking mode i was like tonight's the night tonight's the <laughs> night somebody drowns in the lake and we never <laughs> come back tonight's <laughs> the night we go full rainforest <laughs> fire festival dash <laughs> con you know like here's where we get the the breeding grounds for the deep dives people will do on this about youtube the like fucking inter in internet years, you know? historian video or whatever yeah, yeah, so, yeah for sure yeah, and it, it just turned out to be like fine and it's i mean besides fine, we yeah. had a couple injuries but they looked cool mm -hmm. You know, yeah, we made the shit out of them. Suppose so. you could have injury. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, like, that was that was something that was really nice, too, because I was like, I really hope this is such a beautiful thing. After, especially after, like, Saturday had gone on, I was like, this is such a beautiful thing. I pray and hope that we can do this again. And it looks like all signs point to this being totally doable again. And for mm -hmm. everybody to reach into their own pockets to pay the staff yeah. who organized it. The organizers is uh, really I still, cool because they I still have it. not done that. I got to go do that because absolutely... Yeah. Yeah. Like, and they killed yes. it. Yeah. You fucking killed yeah it. Like, I didn't. Yeah. It was really, it was really well ran. And, mm. you know, like the things that could have been like optimized on were like, you know, as opposed to the things that like could have gone wrong. It is just oh. like, it's insane. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you know, I think fucking... we're really like, it really, I feel I like, was... yeah. I was worried about like, like I knew there were, you know, 19 year olds and, 16 year olds coming i was like if one of those bitches gets drunk like i don't know what's are we gonna be yeah able to... yeah but i didn't hear about anything like that happening so i assume I either, either i assume either it didn't happen or it was handled I did, and i didn't see them yeah. at any of the sort of alcohol spaces okay so i think nice. they'll probably be fine solid yeah excellent <clears throat> but everybody was mostly you know like most people there were good eggs you know yeah, we had a couple yeah, chaos yeah. agents, but for the most part, you know, everybody <laughs> was pretty, you know, well behaved and mm -hmm. like treating the situation with the respect that it deserved, especially as a first time event. And that was like, yeah, yeah, really yeah. nice yeah. to see because I'm always that I'm always like a Virgo, like, oh, my God, you guys, like, if we break the rules now, we, can, you know, whatever. <laughs> but like, it was, it was like nice. Like, there was the spirit of like, we need to take care of the cabins. We need to take care of this. Yeah, we need to, like, be yeah, nice. Yeah. Like, like one beer can got fell into the lake, was blown into the lake. And we were like who's jumping in to get it hey. yeah. and that oh, person was crazy. crazy and then crazy defaulted so if you're doing the litter <laughs> management in the lake you know it's crazy's fault and if, know, if you want to ban know him you know that's to. like <laughs> we would understand you know yeah you'd be the uh, uh go from the the in-group pope to the in-group scapegoat yeah you know? i did i did really love hearing about the when they were like oh you guys are so easy to clean up after i'm like oh and it's like, like, listen, fuck the yeah, Girl man. Scouts. <laughs> the Girl Scouts can be easier we'll than the Girl Scouts. Girl Scouts. Can do. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking pussies. <laughs> <laughs> what is it like? There's a, you know. Nope, I've lost it. Never mind. <laughs> They're still alpha and beating the Girl Scouts. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, Girl Scouts have a black budget. My mom got pulled out of the Girl Scouts because my uh, grandpa was like, where the fuck is your money going to? And then they wouldn't tell him. So he's like, okay, you can get some other stupid bitches to raise money for you. My kids are getting out of here. So 
Yeah. They wouldn't tell him. Wow. Yeah, black budget. That's hard. That's it's like hardcore. quote charity. It's like this organization, you know, I don't know. Could be going who to knows? get a money laundering scheme, you know, who knows? But. Oh my god. Wow. The Girl the Scouts of America. Dark, yeah. The dark Earth side is a money of the laundering scheme. Girl you heard it here first Damn. That's hardcore. Let me give it's let me hard. give you the Girl Scout pillow, okay? <laughs> <laughs> that was another thing, like just hearing some of these like things that Ken and I say to each other all the time, you know, like <laughs> pilled mm. and uh, whatever like hearing yeah. those in real time by like people that like you know is like it's like oh thank god somebody understands this like quarter of my brain that's been relegated entirely to these stupid memes you know that was like mm-hmm. sick <laughs> yeah oh man mm. and the energy ken and i bring to everything is just like how how offensively can we speak to one another and still be friends you know and that was nice. like appreciated in this group which was nice <laughs> Yeah, dude, I fucking love it. Honestly, like, like, let me tell you, like, I used to have that a lot in my fraternity, you know, all the way back in college. Like, we would just mm-hmm. fucking clown on each other all the time. It's like, this is what love is. Love is, like, seriously, I was like, this is pe- is when you find people that you can clown around with and, like, you know, mm-hmm. point out each other's shit, but in an affectionate shit, way. Yeah. It's like, yeah, this is fucking... And then I kind of, like, completely lost that for a while after college. Like, you know, I was hanging out with the rationalists and just no one did that. <laughs> no mm-hmm. one did that in the oh, rationalists. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. We were all, like, very serious Sunday. people. Yeah. Lim talked about on Sunday feeling like she had this group of people who, like, kind of could, like, talk a little shit to her and feeling like, yeah. oh... Like, these people, like, don't think, like, anything about me that, you know, like, I'm not above this, like, joking thing or whatever. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's, like, Uh, super, like, when Ken was, like, bimbo for scale. (laughs) I was sent. I was like, okay, this is it. These are my people, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, there's just, I think also, you know, it it goes without saying, like, this is the biggest group of anything I've been to Mm post-pandemic. Because I think, like... It was so easy, yeah. and I, I hate to bring up the big P word and the plague and all that, but the big like, P word, the big P word. Yeah, <laughs> this, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what people used to call me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> the so, Wuhan ass plague. Like, <laughs> the Wuhan ass. <laughs> Jeez, fuck, dude. <laughs> Too I was going to say that's what you people used to call me back in high school. The big ass P. Uh, uh, <laughs> You didn't go to high school. <laughs> that was like I know that's this... a joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Stop freaking yeah. me laugh. <laughs> so there was like this, this um, for me at least, like I won't say that it like I've never been out in public or whatever. It's not like I've been totally quarantined my entire like two years or whatever. I've but never I been out in public. <laughs> <laughs> I was raised in this room. I will never leave this room. But you know, like I, it was hard to get out of the mindset of like. Well, most things aren't really happening right now, so it's kind right. of work home, work home, work home. Yeah, work, yeah. Work boyfriend's house, work home, you know? And so, yeah. like, to be like, oh, yes, I can plan a trip. Like, you know, that takes me five days out of town. Like, that was just nice in and of itself, because I haven't left, like, my general, like, I wouldn't say, like, three-hour driving area my in life. a really long time. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't left my life. So, you know, to get to, like, be like, okay, like, I understand that it's not, the big P word isn't over, but to at least be able to act like it was over for a weekend, you know, like in a way was like, okay, we will get back to this eventually. That was yeah. affirming. I don't think I realized mm-hmm. that I needed that until I got it, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was nice. Hard same, hard same. I was, I've been super isolated. I like didn't, I think before this, my biggest social event was like literally 10 people and New Year's. Which was like nice. Oh, wow. Don't get me wrong, which was nice. But and then before that was like almost fucking nothing. Like I've been not not like entirely because of safety. It's like okay, safety, but also I'm fucking depressed. And so like that combination really made it hard to be social. Like so this was a really big deal for me to go from like not to like almost nothing to like a ten person event to like a four hundred person event. It was like mm-hmm. I was I was wondering if I was gonna be feeling overwhelmed and I think maybe the first night a little bit. But I think I acclimated pretty quickly overall. It's just like, yeah, this is fucking awesome. Let's just <laughs> let's just yeah, fucking yeah. go. Like, Everybody just... I talked to was pretty overwhelmed <clears throat> the first night. So yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got I got overwhelmed. That's why we all went drinking. We calmed down. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know it was like possible for me to get overwhelmed from meeting so many new people because I'm so extroverted and I just love mm. hanging out with like new people and like making conversation mm. with people so yeah, much. Yeah, it yeah, took yeah, me yeah. like for a sure, full sure. forty eight hours to feel like. Oh, this is actually a little overwhelming. It'd be nice to just talk to like maybe one or two people at a time instead of like five or six. 
but yeah. and I didn't I didn't even realize I had that limit. So I could realize, you know, it's uh it's really intense in that way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, and I, know I was grateful people... for the few the few moments where I would be like, okay, I've got to go back to my cabin to powder my nose or whatever. And yeah. just like find an excuse to like be alone for like just a minute because mm. the space was so beautiful. Like the camp itself was gorgeous to be right there on the lake and everything. Like yeah. it was just oh, nice to like so nice. be every now and again, you know, but I didn't mm. feel like I was ever pressured to like show up anywhere. Like one of the yeah. things that one of the guys we had dinner with after I think checkout was like, he was like, it was nice that it felt invitational to go everywhere. But if you got somewhere, you didn't like the class, you just got up and left. And like nobody was yeah. going to like get be on your case about it, you know? And yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was huge, too, because there was this very yeah, much like come as it was. You got what you brought, you know, you brought good energy. You got good energy. You know, you brought like, you know, maybe I need a little bit of space. but You got your space like there was it was very like you could ask for what you wanted and get it out of the experience. It was very I think you keep hearing the phrase choose your own adventure game. Yeah, and it was, yeah. I think that's that's pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like or as that. adults like to call them dating simulators. Uh, dating <laughs> simulators. Excuse me. Choose your own wife. Or choose wife your own chat wife. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did like that sense of like everyone was sort of like weaving their own path through the vibe camp mm -hmm. experience, and you got to kind of intersect with other people's paths. Like at some point, I checked into the tea house briefly, and I saw people were playing Go, and I was like. Oh. All right, I'm going to do something else, but good for you guys that you found some people to play Go with in the middle of Vibe Camp, and you're probably having a good time just being like, yeah, let's talk about Go. Let's talk about... I, I used to play Go, so I'm like, let's talk about, you know... Go is a nice game. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> but a chessboard, yeah. yeah. I am. I was a little sad. There was, there was like... If there's one thing I, like, actually regret is that, like, I, I basically didn't get to sing, which I'm very sad about. And, I'm like... Either. Like fucking, I was gonna go to karaoke, but first I was in the pool, and then the line mm -hmm. was really long. Then I went to dinner, oh, yeah, and it just yeah. didn't happen. And I also missed the choir event because the location on the schedule was TBD, and I didn't see it get updated. So I was like, "Fuck it, yeah. I'm gonna do something else." And then like, I heard Tim uh, did like a whole like campfire thing ar along. around the campfire sing along, and I. I decided to avoid the campfire because the smoke was bothering me. So I'm just like, ah, oh, I missed every opportunity to sing. Oh, it's so sad. Just next year. I'm just going to have to. Yeah, next year. Dial that in next I'm year. feeling a lot of. I spent the first half of this podcast talking about how hard it is to be pretty. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. I guess, yeah. I stand by what I said. I meant it. I meant every word. Yeah. That makes me seem like a vain bitch. There we go. No, I mean, it's 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 real. <laughs> there are unique challenges. That's that's something I've learned from talking to a lot of pretty girls. See, I don't you I don't see, remember the first half of this podcast <laughs> so going hard. like that, but okay. <laughs> the, uh, I'm coming back to myself. Uh. <laughs> uh, um. No, it's gone. <laughs> So speaking of pretty girls, one one experience that I kept having here that was nice for me specifically is like, I think this was the least intimidated by beautiful women I've ever been in my entire fucking life, which just like felt Based. really nice, you know, like in a lot of other events like this, I would have, especially for women, I just didn't, I would have been like, wait, like, you know, past a certain point on the scale, I would have been like way too intimidated in trying to introduce myself. If I thought someone was like a nine, I hate using the numbers, but if I thought someone mm -hmm. was like a nine, I would have been like, no way. Like they don't want to fucking talk to me. I'm just some, this awkward fucking nerd and they have better things to do. <laughs> but like I, at Vikamp, like I, there were a lot of people I wanted to meet. There were a lot of people who I like, who had told me in DMs that they wanted to meet. And I was like, I'm just going to meet everybody. And it just worked. I just like went up and introduced myself to a lot of people, including again, some very beautiful women. And it was just fine. And I just like felt fine about it. And I didn't feel like, I didn't feel intimidated and I didn't feel like, uh, particularly needy either. Like another yeah. thing that used to happen mm -hmm. for me, you know, with beautiful women was like, I need you to like me, please like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel like part of it is also like, you're not just like, Luca is like, you know, ethereally beautiful, but like, that's not why I follow Luca. I follow Luca because she's like intelligent and like, she has a really interesting perspective on things. This was something mm -hmm. I was, I was like kind of chit chatting with Lim about is I was like, you know, I realized like at the archery range, I was like, nobody here gives a shit if I'm good at fucking archery. Nobody follows me because they, I'm good at archery. Like, why would I think that they would only love me if I was good at archery? This is so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it was like this thing like baked into my head about it. Like, I guess from like, I left over from like going to real school. Sorry, Ken. You know, but like, <laughs> but there was like, you know, this like, I, it's like, I did, there was yeah, no missing context. 
<laughs> but you know, like I, it wasn't like I was not into talking to Jess because like she's ten feet tall and like beautiful. You know, I was into talking to Jess because like we've talked before about like uh, you know, just some stuff. Yeah. And I mean, I was interested. I will say, my wives. It was a little <laughs> different because I was just like petrified to meet them in real life because I was like, "You're all so beautiful. Help me, please." You know, my wives. But my wives. It was like that wasn't the re- I, and I didn't feel like when people approached me that that had anything to do with it. It was like, oh my god, mm. I remember reading your beauty and power thread, and I was like, oh my god, what? Yeah. You know, like the amount of people that approached me were like, I remember when you wrote about this, and it like meant like that was like a big moment for me. Like yeah, that was like dude. so mm, big, and it yeah. was like mm. so when people, you know, there was never this like assumed like anybody's coming on to anybody because the shared context is that we all know each other. Yeah, for yeah. some reason besides that, you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think that might have had something to do with it. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Also, yeah. the women at Vibe Camp. Whew, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, like, I know we, I know we did. water, man. I know we did a whole appreciation thread, or maybe Gray did a whole appreciation thread for the boys, which I fucking loved, and I'm so glad oh, that really? the boys got the... Yeah, did like you see the... Like, just... Yeah, yeah, she just did like like went through like twenty dudes and was just like, "Here's all this shit that I think is oh, really wow. sexy about you." And I thought that I was so glad that the boys got to have that experience. I'm a, I feel like we haven't had an appreciation thread for the ladies. There have been some individual ones, but I'm just like, no, damn, this looks fucking like a good every... job for me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but actually though, if you want, I I just I was I was very happy <laughs> to mm-hmm. just get to see everyone being so beautiful. Yeah, and, and also it it's like, like you were saying darb it's sorry to interrupt but no, just yeah. like the combination of like first of all you're gorgeous second of all i love your writing which is such a fun great combination just like wow yeah. i feel like i'm like yeah i'm getting like a more complete perspective because i've already read so much of your writing i get to like immediately have that extra context to like mm-hmm. plop in there and be like wow you, i like oh, for sure and it yeah. was like it, it, and that was the thing it never felt like cheap it never felt like superficial it was always like it was always like, and not even like felt, I don't think, I don't feel that it was ever superficial. That's what I mean. Mm. Like in that sense that it was extremely like heartfelt and like, you know, I wasn't running up to people like saying like, I love your abs. It was like, <laughs> it was like, I love what you like bring to the party every day. You know, like I love like yeah. logging on and being like, you know, cause like some of these people have notifications on for, I'm like, when they tweet, I want to see it, you know? <laughs> And it's like, uh, I don't have tweet, I don't have notifications on for when people reply to me, but I do have when these people tweet, you know, because like, that's the level of like stuff that they bring every day. And it's like so exciting to see. Yeah. And that was like, hugely cool to pop mm. into them in real life and be like, you just, what you wrote, like meant a lot to me. And I hope you yeah. know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. I'm like, I don't know. Vap camp was great. And uh, <laughs> if you didn't go, ten out of ten would go again. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for um, sure. The next yep. time I'll host a class. I don't know what it'll be, but yeah, I'll host something. Yeah, I would also. I have a bunch of ideas for things. Mm-hmm. I got. To, I got basically too overwhelmed to do anything this year. So it's just like, uh, yeah, I did t- with all the stuff coming I out. Like, I wish I had done pins or something. <laughs> like I just had so much going on. Like right up until like literally the day that I left, that there was no way and. Yeah. I will not make that mistake again. Because, like, yeah. fucking Unfinished Owl handing out NFTs that and was there were so new sick. friend tokens. That was so ah, that was New that was friend so tokens. Funny. Uh, I'm going to keep that forever, you know? <laughs> new friend tokens. Oh, new that's... friend tokens. Like, bitch, nice, that's nice, so nice. fucking funny. Yeah, yeah. I loved it. All the swag I got, all the merch and everything, like, it's all going in, like, a shadow box. Mm. And, like, Zach was a genius. He got that fucking cozy hat signed by everybody who's like this could wear something by vibe camp Nine. yeah i signed i, I like, signed that hat i signed that hat oh, yeah, yeah. It's, Me gonna, too. it's going places i would love it if we adopted this like uh this burning man thing of like everyone sort of comes with a gift there's like something that they just give other people mm-hmm. for free mm-hmm. at the thing yeah. that would be super fun like services or like, like a really like good the little, idea. little like pins a good and shit like that would be too. so fucking cute yeah exactly exactly like oh that could be fun i don't know what mine would be mm. i okay there's a thing I always want to do with people, and I never know if it's like too rude to do. But like, I feel like, like I I I look at people and I have like really strong opinions about what's going on with them based on their faces, like sort of specific patterns of tension in their face. And I always want to or tell like people their, their shoulders <laughs> and maybe what you could fix through, yeah. to fix, you know, through a uh, certain activities, you know. Yeah, it's mostly oh the face, God. but also also kind of posture and just general body language. But so mm-hmm. much stuff in the face, like people. I think people really don't know how much stuff is going on yeah. in their faces. And I want to, yeah. I've always wanted to just like 
tell the tell people. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell us. Tell me what's wrong but with me, you see. Okay, it seems rude. <laughs> yeah, tell her what's wrong you're with fine. her, and then tell me what's good with me. I'm fine. <laughs> you're fine. You're fine, Darb. You're fine. You're fine. You're all. It's Pop not. A, it's not. A, <laughs> but uh, it would. It would be fun to just get to do a little like. Uh, yeah, I get to do a little face read, face free face reading. <laughs> oh, I don't know if this is a thing people would be into, but I would enjoy. Would love that. that. I would enjoy giving that a shot. Yeah, what a I don't. <laughs> I've I have like really strong impressions of people like that too, but a lot of times I don't know if it's always like positive. So I didn't want to do the you yeah, know, give me your impression of me, uh, I'll give my impression of you thing because like you know. It's like, uh, mm, <laughs> It's tough. It's tough. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, what do you? What is your? What is your face read of me? Uh, right now you seem you seem happy, man. Like earlier in the call, you were maybe seeing a little more down, but like, like I feel I feel like you know we've been having a good time. And it seems yeah. like you cheered up. So that's yeah, it's nice to see, man. I, I love to see it. Love to see it. Thank that's, you. That's it. <laughs> that's the main thing. No, I'm just curious. Wanna, now I want to know just, what's wrong with me. I just want to see the homies happy. No, you're fine. You're don't even. Don't even sweat it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sus, but okay. <laughs> She's like, interesting how I don't feel fine. And you're telling me I'm fine, but Oh, do you not feel fine? What what do you <laughs> No, I'm good at the moment. Okay. All right, yeah. I'm seems, still I think yeah. I've still got the post camp glow. We'll see how long it lasts. Yeah, your face looks like it's glowing. Yeah. Oh. Thanks, I'm really yeah, low lit. It's a low lit industrial yeah. lighting. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I shot myself in tungsten. I thought it'd be a good look. Yeah. Sorry, it's a stupid film joke. <laughs> okay, well, I have got to go off to my uh, 9 to 5. Yeah. Um, But this has been lovely, and I wish it could have yeah. gone longer. But yeah. I feel like we got we got plenty of Vibe Camp stuff to talk about, and I'm going to thread about this later. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had, sure. a lot of, um, I had a lot of fun. And I think this is in very painfully good. earnest yeah. fashion. Painfully yeah. earnest fashion. That's the stuff. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah, I've been practicing. <laughs> Uh, painful nice. earnestness. Yeah. It's not... Yeah. It's always so good to talk to you, QC. It's always uh, so lovely. You yeah, got man. both same to both of you. This was really great. Mm. Yeah. Also, I did. I also wanted to say that uh, my my basic impression of you was that you were going to be much more uh, aloof and less happy than you ended up being. So I was really happy <laughs> to see you really fit in. You know what I mean? Thanks, man. Yeah. So yeah, sometimes I do get. Aloof and unhappy. That's true. That's uh, happened. <laughs> happens to all. Happens to the best yeah. of us. <laughs> I was I was glad I could go into Vibe Camp on like a rel relatively happy already, and then just ride ride the wave, like, the way up. That that was really fun to get nice. to do. Yeah. yeah. All right. Nice. Well, signing off. Yep. Awesome. Love you guys. Say goodbye, Feline. Bye, everybody. everybody. This was great. See you around. <laughs>